Hello everyone, welcome to the R Masterclass course. My name is Abhijit Singh and a little introduction about myself. I am currently working at Vizwara as a software developer. Previously, I was working in Fire which is India's fastest unicorn company. I have cleared Google Summer of Code, I have been into Summer of Bitcoin. And by the end of this lecture, I want you to get excited why you should learn R. In this lecture, we are going to learn why you should learn R, why R is still holding the strong position in data science even though there are many programming languages that have been growing in outpace uh, rapid speed such as python and julia but still r holds the strong position in data science and why company still uses r we are going to look at what are the job opportunities job markets in r are and in the end we are going to look at what are the we are going to learn in this course with this by the end of this lecture i want you to get very excited why you are what you are going to learn in this course with this let's get started so starting off with the first thing we are going to look at the first meme that is in other programming languages such as c c++ rust all they have in this programming syntax they need semicolon at the end if you forgot uh, the compiler would complain such as in c sharp also uh, if you forgot to add semicolon the compiler would complain hey you have forgotten the semicolon whereas in r the compiler is very much smart it would automatically handle stores in when in compilation also if you are uh, handling wrong data type it automatically converts into the uh, right data type that needs to be there and our compiler is much more mature while doing this so you could see how r stand off from other language programming languages so why you should learn r basically if you are working uh, if you have to create statistical model such as linear model or polynomial model r is the best model to go with and if you are working on data analysis tools and you have visualization tool even though in you are in python uh, you have matplot and other uh, uh, seaborn libraries to visualize and r we have ggplot2 which is more robust you could do much more interactive r plotting and uh, in many pharma industry r is the standard way for data analysis and data science so if you are doing statistical thing r is the fastest way and uh, after in few minutes after uh, we are going to look at the compare the, the speed of r versus julia versus python in terms of statistical compa uh, comparison how fast is r is so you could see r was specifically designed for statistical analysis where it's still holds the strong ground in that area and it's used for data visualization plot so it already come with pre-installed pre library that is ggplot2 which is more robust than mod, uh, matplot and seaborn libraries you could create a very interactive dashboard with ggplot2 so that's why r still holds the strong ground uh, it has vast array of packages and function for statistical technique and such as uh, dd plot and dd calculation to do your statistical analysis and it is that's why it is a uh, excellent tool for scientists and statisticians now let's look at the comprehension package does r contain so r have ggplot2 as we have discussed earlier ggplot2 is for data visualization which is uh, more uh, com, uh, more robust than matplotlib and uh, seaborn libraries in python and then we have a uh, deployer that is used for uh, data manipulation in python we have similarly uh, tools such as pandas and numpy in r we have deployer and in uh, we r we have tied dr that is used for uh, uh, visualizing the row and column of the uh, your data data set so uh, this we have uh, tidy our guy uh, and csv we have uh, numpy and then we use uh, show table columns uh, that is uh, top 10 
show uh, it shows uh, table columns uh, in R we have tidy R and then we have caret which is used for classification and regression training which is full form of caret uh, which is used for training model uh, for classification model and regression model if you are building which are very powerful tool in data manipulation and visualization and modeling data visualization so r holds a strong ground in uh, data visualization many companies such as pharma lupin uh, company use r as a base standard for data visualization because you have very much interactive plots as compared to matplotlib we have ggplot2 and shiny which are data visualization libraries package that used to create highly customizable and interactive gra graphics very easily and uh, you could here see mention that are uh, used for explanatory data and analysis next reason why our trail holds strong ground is integration with other tool if you are working with data, big data such as Hadoop, uh, Spark, and SQL, it, uh, you could easily connect R with it, and you could um, have like it could easily work with your Excel sheet or other database you are working with. So, if you are building a some um, statistical model, R is the best way to go till now. Now, let us look at the community and uh, support from R. So, R is open source and it have a large number of uh, community active and still many scientists and research users are uh, for their pub, uh, for their their work for data science basically and r still holds the it's a great uh, beginner tool like if you are building a statistical model what do i mean by statistical model that is a linear model in which is in form of ax plus bx uh, 2 plus cx and so on if you have same same model then r is optimized for that and it have strong community and support from the team so it is very easy to learn although r have some uh, weird syntax you might incur with but you might uh, in this like, uh, course you will get uh, familiar that it is uh, nothing new you will be using a lot of that syntax so it will be a second nature to use it is used highly in acam academic so if you are in doing um, your bachelor's or master's and if you have a specialization course in ai or in um, I, uh, information technology or computer science r might be the important course you have in those so r is widely used in academic r is widely used in academic and research purposes so if you are in enrolled in BTEC or in masters or you are doing your research you might probably have a course in R because it's a basic foundation for statistic analysis so um, if you have a linear algebra model um, R is the best way so and because R is much more robust and versatile it have um, much more community and have um, integration tool to uh, connect with other La, uh, big data so that's why R uh, plays a basic role in data science next we have learning curve so other languages such as rust and have a very stale uh, learning curve so if you are learning R at uh, some point that curve becomes like a straight line so you might not able to gain too much but uh, our learning curve is very much simple so if you are learning r it's very much uh, exponential so it's very easy it have uh, some odd uh, syntax but it once you try to use it you will get an intuition behind it it will be a second nature to you and in this course uh, by the end of this course you would be very much comfortable in r next why is r is used is um, you could use it with python and r so in data science you could have a stronghold set in your tool list so if you are applying to a job uh, companies have position which include r and python so you could have different models and tools to 
get analysis using R and Python. Job market, so R is very native and since uh, there is no too much competition in R, so there is a lot of open position in R. So if you learn R, you could easily able to get the data science job in R. And if you look at the demand for our jobs, you could see here that our jobs have been statically increasing and while other are there might be fluctuation, but in R there is a sudden growth since uh, LLM and you could see that it is still growing and here you could see that R is still growing compared to other uh, statistical tools such as COBOL, SAS, uh, SAS tools and here you could see that the R market is still uh, gaining their traction and while this is gaining the competition is very less. So uh, the people who are applying in our jobs have very good chance to be get that high paying jobs. So now let's look at the Glassdoor uh, our basic salary. So if you look here, you could see that our basic salary is about 62K, which is way high, higher than the Python and other statistical tools such as Julia. With this, I hope this make you excited. Now let's look at the comparison of speed in statistical analysis which we will create a statistical formula and compare the speed of R, Julia and Python and let's see which comes to the top. So if you are in data science and have statistical calculation, let's see which tool you should use. Obviously it should be, uh, you know that it is should be the R because R is optimized for statistical uh, calculation. Let's look at how much it's uh, efficient in calculating all those. With this, let's get started. Now it's time to calculate the R statistical speed. So what we are going to do is we are, we are going to create some random number. Here you don't need to get um, too intimated. We are going to learn this whole uh, R structure and this is a, a script that what it does it, it generate random data and we print few data and then we calculate the mean of those data. So you could see here we are taking million of data randomly and then we calculate the mean. So R is very statistically optimized so it should be better performing than Python and Julia. If you take matrices and multiply it maybe that won't be the case for this because R uh, is not uh, better optimized for machine learning. Uh, matrices in which you train models, but it is for statistical data which have a uh, linear algebra equation. So R would outperform Julia and Python. So here we have uh, taken random number of million data set here in line number six and then we calculated the mean. And here you could see uh, our time taken for R is 0 0.1017 seconds. So we could here uh, we could write those time down so it takes 0 0.017 second for R. Now let's test for Julia. Let me change my code console. Now I have created the script in Julia and Python. Now let's it's time to benchmark those speed. So if we run on Python, if we take let's see how much time it takes. It takes 0 0.07. So let us write those down. 0.07 and let's see what's the speed for Julia for the similar thing and if we run this for Julia we could see it's uh, 0.04 and here I want to add few things that I am running a machine or this test on machine i5 1340 F so here's my 13th generation and F version and I have 24 gigs of RAM so if you are running on your machine it would be taking some other time sp speed because on the process uh, the processor could handle it. So clearly here, here we could see the fastest one is R then we have Julia and then we have Python as expected. Uh, so for statistical analysis, R is very much optimized. So R, then we have Julia 
and then we have five ten. Now you have realized that how fast it is R in statistical analysis. Now it's time to look at what we are going to learn in this course. So here is the mind map that we are going to follow. So in this course, we are typically going to have five lecture. In this, we are going to learn that first one we have already covered. Why learn R, R versus Python Julia? And we have calculated the speed, statistical speed in terms of calculating algebraic uh, mean and we have found that R was way ahead uh, in terms of comparison as you can see it was 0 0.17 as compared to 0 0.04 and 0 0.07 than Python so it's almost taking one seventh speed of Python and uh, one fourth of speed of Julia. And then we could, we are going to learn about our basic data types. Then we are going to look at the condition statement and loops. Then we are going to look at some methods for visualizing our, uh, some plots we are going to visualize. And then we have project building one in which we have going to have a, uh, we are going to import some data and have uh, some visualization plot on it. And similarly, we have project building tool, we are going to do similar thing with different data set and different visualization tools. With this, I hope you are very much excited about R and with this, I am going to see you on to the next lecture. Thank you everyone.